Hello everybody, this is Heather Whitman here at the Highlands Museum and Discovery Center in Ashland, Kentucky. This is another video in our series that we are doing during the COVID-19 pandemic as the museum is unfortunately closed right now. Um, the exhibit we're going to be walking through today is called The Old Ball Game, A History of Baseball. And this exhibit was supposed to open to the public in early April, um, so unfortunately nobody has gotten to visit it yet, which is why I chose to walk through it today. A little bit of background on the history of baseball. It is thought to have been born out of two British games, cricket and rounders, and variations of these two games spread throughout New England during the mid-1800s. Um, this is during the Industrial Revolution. More people were living closer together, so the possibility of playing games such as this was more available. In 1845, a group of New York City men created the New York Knickerbocker Baseball Club, and one of them, Alexander Cartwright, designed a set of rules that laid the groundwork for modern baseball. This included the diamond-shaped field and the three strikes rule. In 1857, we had the first baseball league, and the first professional league came about in 1871. I'm just gonna walk over here to this first case. And in it, we talk a lot about um, the three pieces of a baseball game that are so important. And one of them is the history of the baseball. Um, there was no regulation on early baseballs. Usually a pitcher just brought one that he had or one that he had made. And of course, this resulted in a variety of uh, sizes and shapes and also durability. In 1876, a pitcher in the National League came up with a design that the league decided to adopt as their standard. And there's been little change to the baseball since about 1931 when a cushioned cork center was introduced. Next up we have the mitt, of course. And surprisingly, in early baseball games, they did not wear any sort of glove or covering in fact, some considered it, quote, unmanly, end quote. Um, there's some debate over who wore the first glove, but many hold it to have been Albert Spaulding in 1877. His glove was fingerless, but it was very padded, and soon other players were asking him to make them gloves. By the end of the century, gloves had fingers and were much more heavily padded. And of course, we have to talk about the baseball bat. Again, in the early days, players just brought their own bat. There were no regulations, and this caused a great discrepancy in size and material. Most players learned pretty quickly that the best bats had rounded barrels. And finally, in 1859, they began to put regulations on their size and shape. And then, of course, the Louisville Slugger came about in 1884, which is still one of the best well-known baseball bat companies. And this particular bat is kind of interesting. This is a collector's piece um, from the 1976 World Champions. Winners that year were the Cincinnati Reds and it is signed by that team. Next up, we have a little section back here about local teams. And this is kind of interesting. Um, this has been in the collection of the museum for a number of years, but I don't have a lot of info on it. This is actually a Russell C&O baseball uniform from the 1930s. I was able to find a picture of another C&O team, but I don't know if it is Russell or not. Um, if anyone has any, uh, any other information about this team, I'd love to hear about it. Um, it does appear that there were a number of teams at this time sponsored by big companies, and these teams were adult players. And over here we have my favorite section. Um, whenever I go to do an exhibit where the topic is kind of broad, such as baseball, I try to find a local element. And I was very amazed at the number of players we have from our tri-state area that went on to play pro. Um, one of the oldest that I found was this one, was Charlie Hastings, who was from Ironton, Ohio, and he played for the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1896. He's the gentleman here. On the left. And then many people are probably familiar with Don Gullett. He went to McHale High School in South Shore and he played for the Cincinnati Reds for a number of years. We do have a jersey here that he was nice enough to sign. 
And then also Brandon Webb from Ashland, Kentucky, played for the Arizona Diamondbacks for a number of years as a pitcher. And then my last section here, last but not least, is dedicated to Little League. Now, there were baseball programs for teenagers starting in the 1920s, but we didn't have a anything for preteens until 1938. And this is thanks to a Pennsylvania man named Carl Stotts, who in that summer got several neighborhood ch children together and basically put together Little League. Um, soon other communities nearby were wanting their own teams. And within just a few decades, we now have 200,000 Little League teams in all 50 states and 80 countries. So I hope you all have enjoyed this little walk through of our new baseball exhibit. We are going to leave this up for a little bit while longer than we originally intended since we have been closed due to COVID-19. We're not sure when we're going to get to reopen, but we do hope that it is soon. In the meantime, I hope you all stay safe, stay home as much as you can, and take care. Bye.